Call the meeting to order at 631. Please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Of the United States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Here. 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 Present. Here. Trustee Peterson. Present. Mayor Gertner. Present. Um, one trustee attending remotely. Uh, Mayor report, um, just a couple things. First, um, I, I just learned today that uh, congratulations, Jim Moran, um, who he earned a certificate in public management from the Department of Public Administration at Northern Illinois University. So congratulations on that. Um, again, August is back to school safety month. So parents and students are encouraged to uh, take extra precaution when traveling to and from school, whether walking, riding or waiting for the bus. and um, for those of those going back to school, good luck. I think the high school starts next week and the grade schools thereafter. So, all right. Um, no citizens have signed up to address the board. Um, next on to the consent agenda. Uh, was there any um, request to remove any of the items from the consent agenda? All right. Um, I, if not, I'll entertain a motion in a second. Motion, Trustee uh, Masick. Second. second. Second, Trustee. Uh, Bluthart, uh, roll call, please. Herman? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. McNeil? Yes. Pierce? Aye. Nasek? Yes. Jacobson? Yes. Six voting yes motion carries. Under the regular business, which is um, consideration and approval of payments of accounts payable as prepared by staff for the amount of $201,935.16. So uh, motion, Trustee Masek. Second. Second, Trustee Berman. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Hi. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Six voting yes. Motion carries. Uh, last item on the regular business is consideration and approval of an ordinance adopting by reference the Lake County Watershed Development Ordinance, Ordinance Number Twenty Three Dash O Eight Dash Twenty Two. I'd entertain a motion and a second, waiving the second reading. Second. Motion, Trustee Masick. Second. Second, Trustee Berman. Any discussion? I hope you all read all 200 and some odd pages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Pierce. Pass. Masek. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, five voting yes, uh, one, abst one abstention. Uh, motion carries. Um, administrator report. Uh, administrator Kime is um, on Zoom. I don't know if he can. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Here, here, yeah. Thank you. Um, so the uh, work, as you know, started across the street. Um, we successfully got some of the comment issues resolved. Um, some polls were removed and they're working to coordinate the rest of the work with them. Um, we are also coordinating other utility companies. Um, we are going a little over budget. Uh, we had budgeted about 250 for all the underground utility and we're probably going to end up significantly higher than that. We're still getting bills and working on AT&T and the uh, Comcast utility. So I'll, I'll update you once all of those amounts are finalized. Um, the clarifier work also continues. The floor slab was poured. Uh, I believe Monday they're scheduled to reset the equipment. So we're hopefully nearing the end of that saga with that project. I know that uh, uh, one of the trustees has asked me to report on the uh, status of insurance. We did reach uh, receive a check uh, for it was looks like five hundred ninety one thousand, so it was just short of six hundred thousand, um, which has been received. That was kind of the easy estimate of the work that we knew we had to do, and everybody agreed on cost. The insurance company will send us once we finalize all of the expenditures. Um, we'll submit everything to insurance and they will cut us an additional check um, to make sure that we get you know full coverage on everything we're owed with that project. But the good news is, is uh, we're nearing the completion there. Um, I wanted to bring to the board's uh, attention that uh, Mark Scarpelli at Raymond Chevy is offered uh, through, through a program offered by GM to install a charging, an EV charging station. Um, Director Heimbrot and I identified a location on Toft, about mid-block near where all the colorful circles are. 
which we could um, fairly easily get power to, to have a public um, charging station. I wouldn't expect that work probably to be completed until spring, um, but we wouldn't have to supply the, the thing. We might have to um, supply some power um, and we're, we're, we're working out the details with them, but I did want to bring it to the, the board's attention. Um, hopefully everybody thinks it's a good idea to have a public charging station downtown in a central location. I thought it was good. Um, yeah. I had a yeah. meeting. Go ahead. Why, why wouldn't you, because one power station, I get it. Probably going to need multiple power stations. Why wouldn't you look at the municipal parking lot? Well, we got to find a location that's, I, I think, a pretty visible, so everybody knows where it's at. Um, we, we could look at other locations. This just kind of well, came. Find it on a, on, the, on their GPS map. They got a car. It goes to a charging station. I don't think you got, you want a wire laying in the street for snow plowing. I think the municipal parking lot would be a better location. So you okay. got to understand the wire left on the street versus a parking lot. You got to take that in consideration. Okay, good, good point. We will consider that. Um, yeah, if if you have other suggestions on locations, you know we're we're all ears. It's you know potentially we could put it in other locations, but um, yeah, I, I understood understood on that wire situation. Um, I had a meeting with Lake County about the North Avenue grade crossing. Um, Canadian National was there. I think they acknowledged there was a poor job done on the approach to that. Uh, what ended up being, I think, a, a track adjustment. Um, it, it, the conversation kind of snowballed into, you know, other work that needs to happen to fix it. And the village doesn't have jurisdiction up there. North Avenue is controlled under the jurisdiction of Lake County Department of Transportation. We, um, you know, we do have an obligation um, to participate in the quiet zone and do what's necessary to keep the quiet zone intact. So train horns don't start blowing. Um, and we have that obligation to basically all the 10 other communities in Lake County on the CN line uh, by agreement. And that was uh, an agreement we pulled out. I read it recently. Um, Lake County is also a partner or a uh, participant in that agreement. They're a party to this agreement. Um, I'm a little unsure why they're not incurring the costs to keep the quiet zone intact, but um, our plan is to install delineators. Um, it was significantly less expensive and we can do that with our crews rather than pour a new concrete median, but now there are other changes happening on that crossing. So I'm just kind of, you know, bringing to the board's attention that, you know, work will continue uh, on our end to make sure the quiet zone stays intact and uh, hopefully between CN and Lake County DOT, they can figure out a way to make that crossing more uh, uh, smoother, uh, a smoother crossing and e more easily traveled. Um, I've been doing some work, of course, on the Brown Avenue um, and 173 era. We're, we're talking to some developers there. Uh, ho hopefully, you know, you will learn about some upcoming deals that I think you'll be pleased with to establish um, you know, possibly a car dealership, possibly restaurants. So we're, we're, we're actively working on that and uh, proceeding. We, we may be entering a situation where uh, we may be seeking some property to create that Brown Avenue intersection. Um, so work continues on that. Um, I have made some progress on Grim Road as well. Um, I, I have assigned easement. Um, I, we're requesting easements and or property from four parties and one party is signed off. So my book, you know, I've got 25% there. So um, work is progressing on that. Uh, we had a road program um, pre-con today. Uh, went well, work will begin in the next couple of weeks. Um, it'll start as always with concrete uh, um, curb uh, removal and replacement. Um, and more, more, more to come on that when we get a firm schedule on start date, but yeah, we should see, see road work starting very shortly here. Um, and the last item on my list is um, just, just so you know, we will have um, the assistant administrator, Ashley Eccles, begin um, on August 28th. All our references have checked out very well. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to onboarding her. I think it's going to be a, a positive addition to staff here. I'm looking forward to it. And with that, uh, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have.
Um, Jim, um, just since we have a, uh, the next meeting will be right before this request. Can you bring up the um, request from the theater and Raymond Chevrolet for the board about um, closing Lake Street for that movie premiere? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. So we got a, a special event request from the movie theater. It uh, it aligns with, uh, I forgot the name of the movie that's coming out with cars in it, but uh, they would like to close a portion of Lake Street between Victoria and Maine. Um, and set some cars out there and kind of turn it into a, an event. Um, the timing of it is, I think it's two days after the next board meeting. Um, so I thought we'd bring it up tonight and see if anyone would have a big issue with that. It technically should be a, a resolution of the village board to close a street. Um, but I wouldn't want you to feel pressured if for any reason you think that that's a bad idea. And you know, the planning will need to occur prior to two days before that event takes place. Um, so I'm kind of not asking the board to do anything tonight other than, you know, you know, discuss and or, you know, raise concerns. It would, of course, get signed. We'd have appropriate um, advanced warning signage and, you know, we, Toft would be the obvious choice there to use. So, um, but we would like to say yes to this event. I believe it's going to receive a positive staff recommendation. And if the board doesn't have an issue with it, you know, we'll proceed as if the event were to happen with a resolution to be approved at the next board meeting. Jim, was it five to seven? Is that the hours? It was a couple of hours. Five to I, seven. I, it was five to seven thirty. That's correct. So um, there's no objection. We'll bring that resolution before the board for next, so we can get it approved and go two days later. We've done it before. All right. Anything else? Any questions? Any comments? All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, Madam Clerk, any reports? Uh, in your packet, you're going to find the NPDES report uh, permit for stormwater discharges. This is an annual uh, report, and it's recommended by the IEPA to um, present it annually at a public meeting. So this is for your information only. No action is required. And if you have any questions on the report, you can direct it to Administrator Kime. All right. Thank you. Um, community development, um, Mr. Garrigan is out of town. Um, so I will ask um, finance director uh, Zeta Torres for her report. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board. Um, I just have two items to um, bring to your attention. Just a reminder, the auditors that will be in, on site as of August 21st for that week. Right now, the finance department has done a great job with like we're almost done with the prep work. Everything's going really well. So by Friday, we'll be done with the prep work with me reaching out to them and see if they want us to remotely upload all the data we have for the village. I also wanted to bring to the attention to the board, those reports that I give you on a monthly basis, the treasures report, the bond information, you probably noticed a new line that I put on those statement is called the arbitrage calculation. For those who just for, um, for those who are not familiar what that means is when we issue a bond and we start um, receiving interest over a certain amount or above the rate, we have to do a calculation. Uh, we're required to look at it uh, the first five years of the bond as of the first five years and make the payment. I decided to be proactive as we were looking at the good interest that we're getting on the bond proceeds. So I decided to um, hire a entity that does the arbitrage calculations and you probably saw a liability of 34,000. What that means is that um, we're above the rate that we are allowed to bring income or attain income for the village. So out of all the interest as of 4-30-23, April 30, um, we owe $34,000 to the IRS. It does not mean at this time that we're not in compliance. We do not need to pay the money now. I did decide to be proactive and inform you and keep you up to speed. I'm not required to do so. We could have looked at it five years from now, and then you would have probably asked, like, why we have a big liability. We don't know what the liability is going to be in five years. Because what can happen as the market goes down, the liability could go down. But I will be uh, recording it on the financial statements for the village for the audit as a 430, just as a, a 
something to look at and know it's there because five years from now, many of us may not be here. We don't know, right? But at least the board, this board is informed, is an official document. I am going to record it as a liability and every year it's going to change. So next year, that 34000 could be less. So it all depends. I contracted them to do it annually. I'm doing it to be proactive and to just keep you informed of what could happen in five years. We're not required to um, have to pay that liability from the bond money. The board could decide how we pay it. It could be, you know, 10,000 in five years from now. So I just wanted to inform you so that when you look at that line item, that's what that means. The interest that you see that you have earned, you have to minus that 34,000 at this time. And that's what you have available to use for more capital projects. And that number will change every April 30th to year 2027, where we will make the payment. That's all I have. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions? Death and taxes. Death and taxes. <laughs> okay. um, this, is, this is just a statement to Jim and the finance. When you're budgeting for insurance next year, just expect 20 to 40 percent. Oh. Yeah, my home insurance is twenty five percent. And yeah, yeah, I'm shopping. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, please, Chief Gutcho. Good evening. So, just a couple items to update the board on. Uh, so we continue to work with District Thirty Four in the exploration of their consideration or request of us to make a uh, sign an SRO to their district. Um, last month, I met with their district board and we had a uh, conversation about it. Uh, there seems to be some level of interest. However, they, there's a lot of policy work on the back end that their board directed the superintendent to conduct. So those uh, conversations continue. I haven't gotten an indication of whether or not uh, we expect that request to come to fruition at some point in the future. All I could tell you is that uh, with the way staffing is, it would probably be a second semester or even next year at best that we'd be able to accommodate a request if a formal one comes forward. Uh, as you're probably aware, the Illinois Supreme Court recently ruled to uphold the Safety Act's provision to the uh, complete elimination of cash bail in the state of Illinois. Uh, the stay on the implementation will be lifted effective September 18th. As you can imagine, this ruling has set a chain of events into motion. And the PD is uh, feverishly working to ensure that our staff is ready, policies are updated to be reflective of the new act, and processes are in place to comply. On Friday uh, the 28th, I joined with the mayor in meeting with several community groups to discuss how we can better serve the needs of our homeless population within the village. Uh, all, all participants agreed that the biggest barrier to serving these individuals is the current lack of services within the lack, uh, western part of Lake County. Uh, currently, almost all mental health and shelter services are based out of Waukegan, which obviously creates some insurmountable challenges for the homeless in western Lake County who don't, may not have access to transportation. While the county continues to expand, housing availability through the construction of a new facility. Unfortunately, it's gonna be located in the Waukegan area because they feel that's where the largest amount of demand is. So at the conclusion, all of our local stakeholder older groups agreed that we will continue to collaborate on local solutions to advocate for the expansion of services within our part of the county. A Couple of service anniversaries to recognize throughout the month of July. Officer Scott Johnson reached his ninth year of service with the PD and Officer Brian Holmberg reached his 18th. An update on our opioid statistics. So as uh, we've discussed previously, uh, our community last year, as we closed out the calendar year, was second in the incidence rate um, as we closed out. Closed out. Uh, we talked about all the aggressive response that our department take to try to drive that number down. And uh, through 2023 so far, uh, we have remained off of the coroner's list of the top 10 communities within the county, which is what they track. It's kind of remarkable to think about when despite uh, the countywide numbers, uh, the report yesterday I received from the from the coroner is that Lake County as a whole has seen a 30 to 40 percent increase in their overdose incidence rate. So that tells us that the things that we did in the in the massive distribution of Narcan into the community have, have worked. Just update the board this week we extended a final offer of employment uh, on our selection for our new code enforcement officer. <laughs> Uh, throughout the entire process, both the PD and the community development department usually unanimously agreed on the front runner for the position. I'm excited to announce to you that Alex Marino has accepted our offer and he's set to begin August 28th. Now, some of you may recognize the name. Alex was a police officer for our community for nearly 16 years before he suffered a disabling shoulder injury that left him unable to proficiently operate a firearm in 2018. 
During his career with the APD, he served in many capacities, including a patrol officer, a lead detective, a field training officer, and also as a liaison to then code inspector Paul Green. His pre-existing knowledge of our community, his professional demeanor, proven work record and experience gained from working with Paul distinguished him from the other candidates. We are excited for him to join our team in, in, our new, in the new capacity. I want to update the board that I recently learned of the potential interest of a local philanthropic organization to help us fund a police therapy dog for our community. While funding has not been 100% secured tonight, I wanted to take a moment to introduce the board to how this remarkable initiative is making positive impacts on communities, not only nationally, but in re several recently named Lake County organizations. These loyal and gentle animals have been providing their worth, proving their worth by offering a unique set of benefits that extend beyond the traditional roles of law enforcement. First and foremost, police comfort dogs serve as a bridge between law enforcement and the community they serve. In times of crisis or distress, these furry companions provide a soothing presence that helps to alleviate tension and anxiety. Whether it's a traumatic event, stressful situation, or routine interaction, the presence of a comfort dog is shown to diffuse tension, create a sense of trust, and foster better communication between officers and the public. Moreover, these dogs are our vital support to the mental and emotional well-being of our police officers. The demanding nature of police work often takes a toll on their mental health, as you can imagine. Comfort dogs provide a non-judgmental and unconditional source of comfort and companionship. The simple act of interacting with these dogs has been proven to reduce stress levels, reduce blood pressure, and increase overall morale amongst officers. The benefits don't stop there. Police dogs can also play a significant role in community outreach and education programs. These dogs become ambassadors visiting schools, community events, and even participating in therapeutic programs for at-risk youth or individuals facing trauma. This engagement fosters positive relationships between law enforcement and the public, particularly among young people who might perceive the police as distant or intimidating figures. In closing, the opportunity to introduce a police comfort dog into Antioch represents a progressive step toward forward in our modern policing. The program is symbolic of our commitment to the community well, community's well-being compassion, and enhanced communication between the police and the public. Comfort dogs are more than just animals. They're agents of positive change, promoting mental health, fostering trust, and building bridges that strengthen the fabric of our community. Yeah, have you answer any questions? Any questions from the board? Comments? Thank you. All right, thank you, Chief. All right, any trustee reports? All right. Um, I do have a request to go into executive session to discuss um, pending litigation uh, with no further business to take place after um, executive session. Uh, entertain a motion to that effect. We'll move. Motion Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second Trustee Berman. All right. Uh, meeting is adjourned at uh, 654. Oh, oh, sorry. Roll call. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Six voting yes. Motion carries. All right. Um, we're in executive session.